Hello and welcome to Extra Time. I'm Gary James. We've guests from Prepared PR, Lisa Smith, and from Villa TV, Jack Woodward. Hello, Gary. Jack, nice your, to be here. your first time on the sofa. It Thanks is. For joining uh, they should be claret and blue sofas with me and Lisa here, shouldn't they? But uh, no, great setup. Thanks for asking me to. to no, no, come it's in. good. Well, I say on the show, um, it's a sports-related chat show, so sometimes we like to. You know, show the viewers and introduce them to people sort of behind the scenes, so to speak. So before we talk about Villa and, and what happened at the weekend, which is fantastic, yeah, and what's coming song. up this weekend, um, a, bit of, a bit about you uh, and how you started and, and sort of your journey from when you started in, in the world of journalism up to becoming a, 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 not just a football commentator, but a sports commentator for, for the various media outlets that you, you do bits well, for. Well, it's funny, a lot of young lads, they dream about scoring the winning goal in the cup final, don't they? I yeah. always dreamt about commentating on it, and it hasn't quite happened as far as Villa uh, <laughs> are concerned, but hopefully football. it will in the future. <laughs> exactly, well, I couldn't play football, no. But good at talking about it, yeah. always watched it in an analytical way. I went to university in Sheffield, yeah. and then whilst I was there, I, I listened to Hallam FM, the local station there. So I just uh, thought, well, I'll uh, you know put a dictaphone on the desk when I'm playing my Super Nintendo. Show my age now. Uh, <laughs> but I, w I just did a bit of commentary on it. Didn't think anything of it. Sent it into the sports editor, and he asked me to come in. I made the tea for a bit. I was obviously so poor at making the tea. He asked me to do a game in Exeter at uh, the other St James's Park against Donny Rovers, who were uh, 12 points adrift at the bottom of the league. Obviously, no one else wanted yeah. to go, but I was desperate to do it, really nervous. Uh, but I, I got an opportunity there, and things just developed from there. Did a lot of part-time work with Hallam FM, then went to TFM in Middlesbrough. And then after that, um, I saw an advert on the Newswire saying, can you paint pictures with words? Uh, from uh, BRMB, Tom Ross. Oh, uh, wow. yeah, yeah. Good, I would say, uh, you know, a, a, a good uh, broadcaster, fine yeah. broadcaster of the, of the Midlands. And he gave me the chance to, to come and commentate for BRMB Free Radio as it is now. And then Villa set their own station up after that. And now I do the TV work for them. So uh, that's a brief history of, of how I got it. Your big inspiration, John Motson. Oh, yeah, I love Motty. Yeah, mm. I did uh, wear a sheepskin a couple of uh, years ago. Oh, I was you accused did? of trying yeah. to impersonate him. <laughs> Actually, it was the night we, uh, we went out of the. Uh, League Cup against Bradford, oh. so I've not, I've not done it You're since. Not it but again. no, uh, he was an inspiration. I love his enthusiasm, like the class of Barry Davis. Mm. So you try and inject as much of that into your broadcast mm. as you can, and hopefully the Villa fans at the moment appreciate that because we we do get right behind the team um, in every in every fixture. And, and regarding sort of the, the training side of things, because you're a journalist as well. Yeah. Um, so go to university in Sheffield? or Yeah, I did a history degree. People often ask me, uh, what on earth, <laughs> how on earth are you using your history degree? But you can drop the, uh, drop the odd uh, analogy in, can't you? One, one in the eye, like... Harold from the Battle of Hastings, something like that. Yeah. But, but it's, uh, yeah, it, you use those analytical skills, uh, ability to do a bit of research, make a balanced argument. Mm. So it, it definitely comes in handy. And I did do a, a written uh, newspaper course after I, uh, I left university at, at Sheffield College whilst I was at Hallam, and then I got a job in radio. So that's yeah. how, it's, uh, yeah. how it's panned out for me. <laughs> An unusual career path, but yeah. there, there is no usual one, is there really, but, in the but, world of media? But you, uh, and, and every time I hear you commentate, I'm not saying because you're here, but you are... One of the most natural and, and, and gifted, if you like, commentators. Well, he's not going to get out the door. No, he's not. Um, yeah, but he's not. You, you, you like you 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 very good with words. Yeah. And and, and it's, that makes it and paints the pictures. You're a bit like the way Peter Alice talks about golf. He's wonderful, isn't he? He's, he's very right. human as well. It, he, he, like, he, he doesn't really deal in stats. Mm. He just gives a nice sense of the occasion. I think that's mm. important. And that's, that's, that's what you, I think you and I listen to you. That's, that's what you do very well. Yeah. It, you, it, you have to talk about different things, don't you? Because it's like, mm. you know, talk about the weather. I remember saying once Tony Morley was commentating with me. And I tried to make it sound a bit different. So I said, yeah, touch a moisture in the air here, Tony. A bit of precipitation. There was a delay yeah. and he just said, <laughs> what do you mean it's raining, Jack? <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not very good at the scouts acting. But he, he's been a uh, wonderful company over the years. Tony, yeah. Kemet Norton, another European Cup winner, uh, Andy Blair as well. So we've had a lot of a lot of guys we've worked with. Uh, you know, we've had a, a good, good rapport with them. Yeah. It yeah. must have been. I was going to say, it must have been tough because I know for a lot of this season we we weren't winning many games. No. And, um, but still, somehow you were enthusiastic and and kept the faith. I guess. Yeah, that cup's fans. always half full, not half <laughs> empty. That's the phrase, yeah. and it is true. But there's always hope, and there's always something good you can take out of any game. And yeah, you have to be honest because you need credibility with the supporters you're broadcasting for. But equally, you know, it, it has turned around, hasn't it? You know, yeah, and, and if does. you do believe in, in in your team, you know, it's, it's, mm. yeah, it's been a rough ride, but that's that's part of life. Uh, mm. 
it's the hope that kills you sometimes, <laughs> isn't it? But, uh, but uh, yeah, it's, uh, and, it's and, great fun. And obviously with, with Villa TV, um, you, you've got not just radio experience, you've got a lot of the, the TV experience as well now, and, and, and as well as painting pictures for, for the mind on the radio, people if they're watching it, they, they can see what you're saying. Yeah, they can. So, so, you, so in the point of you've got to, you've got to be very careful and, and, and actually know your facts to some degree when it comes to the TV, haven't you? Yeah, and it's a very different skill doing radio commentary to TV commentary because you are creating the picture for the audience on radio. On yeah. TV, you've got to add to it. And the first time I went into ITV Digital to do some stuff for them, the producer collared me and said, Jack, you're talking too much because I was used to doing radio, yeah. so it's interesting mm. to, to have that yeah. string to I mean, the bone. It's a completely different skill. It, it is indeed. Yeah. Uh, and I know I, it's something I couldn't, can't do. I tried, I can't do it. For some reason, I just can't do it. I can do the interview bit, but I can't do it. You're doing okay to... with the presenting, though, Gary. Yeah, all right. Pretty <laughs> smooth. Okay. So, you, so your job <laughs> safe, mate. Your job safe. Yeah. But no, I, I just one of those things. It is, it is an art in, in itself. And, and with all the different summarizers you've worked with mm. at different games, with the, the, I'm not going to say the best one, but the best two. Oh, that's a really tough one because, uh, you know, from Villa's point of view, they're all different. Uh, Andy Blair is very good with his words. He's good at beating the drum. Tony Morley lives and breathes every moment. He's like a, a fan now. And Ken McNaught gives a great insight to the game. We even use Peter McParland who uh, is oh, in his wow. 80s now, still yeah. playing yeah. golf three times a week, hero from 57. <laughs> he must get sick and tired of talking about those goals. He's dined out on them for nearly 60 years, in fairness. Yeah. But you know, he wants more heroes to emerge, and he's on, on great form uh, as well, and he can give it a slightly different viewpoint. And we've used some of the more modern guys, Lee Hendry, mm. Ian Taylor. I mean, the first game I did, a full live commentary, was up in the North East, Hartlepool against Darlington. A playoff semi-final. I had Peter Beardsley one side and Jim Platt the other. You might not have heard of Jim Platt, but he, he was a keeper for Northern Ireland and uh, and he was had links with Darlington. Peter Beardsley played for Hartlepool, so that that was massive pressure. Yeah. And you know Beardsley signing autographs whilst he's do, whilst he's doing the job. But yeah, you've just you've just got to um, feed off each other. You've got to pay attention uh, to what they're saying, and, and you know you're there to describe what's happening, and and they're you know, in the position to describe uh, why it's happening, I guess, is the simplest way to put it. And, and did, did some of the, the other bits of work you do for, like, TalkSport, I know mm. you do some, did that come off the back of people hearing you or seeing you on, on Villa TV? Yeah, or? yeah sure. Uh, TalkSport was uh, the, the guy in charge of the, of the programme and was a Villa fan. So, you know, that's it. It's, it's, it's your contacts and who you know. Yeah. In it. But, but I've worked for a, a number of different stations before. I, I did Villa Swan FM in uh, Buckinghamshire. Uh, yeah. We've had, uh, you know, Real Radio Yorkshire did a, did a bit of cricket for them. So it's quite a varied existence. I didn't I've know had. you were a cricket man. Oh, yeah, I love All my the years cricket. I've known you, I never knew that. 66 <laughs> not out. My first uh, <laughs> innings for Worksop College under 10s. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember it like it was yesterday. But yeah, no, I love I love playing cricket, uh, Bassett Law League, and you know where I'm from. There works up I play in, in the summer for Woodstats. But it's uh, yeah, it's it's a, it's a cracking spot. I mean, I'd love to do a bit more. But obviously, most of the jobs in cricket, I suppose, are, are ex-players. You know, football mm. is is very different, isn't it, uh, to cricket and golf, which is yeah. my other love. Yeah. Did, I, did I mention I uh, got a hole in one on the Villa Golf Day once? Yeah, the oh, Belfry. That one. So. <laughs> <laughs> I had three <laughs> all on Ryder Cup courses. I remember it. I remember at Lindrick. Yeah. We had the Ryder Cup in 1950. Seven. Peter Alice, <laughs> the voice of year. golf, played in, in that one. And uh, and also at, at the Belfry and the Villa Golf Day, which was a, a bit of an expensive Was that a one. recent golf day? Uh, it was about four years ago. You can still die now on that, can't you? I've had my quota now, though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, talking, about, talking about golf, then, did you, did you watch the Masters? I did, yeah. Phenomenal performance, Great, wasn't, it? wasn't it? Incredible. Uh, Jordan He's 21, Spieth. is that right? Yeah, that's right. 21. He led from, led from the start. He did, start to finish. And Maybe. I mean, it needed Mickelson or Rose to really race out of the blocks yeah. in the last round. Yeah. And having mm. said that, Rose did birdie the first it, two holes. But he was so far ahead. Mm. His composure, his temperament was what impressed me the most. Mm. And yeah, he went on and he's and, only 21 and years he, old. He, he sort of wobbled a little bit, didn't he? But he got himself out of trouble. Mm. Yeah. When he went into that, that pine straw stuff. And he, yeah. Mm. And a couple of incredible shots. Incredible. Yeah. And he had, he's got the fearlessness of youth. Sometimes I think yeah. when you are that young, and he's not inexperienced, he's won tournaments before and yeah. he was a runner-up last year, but you don't overthink it, do no. you? He was going up, he was hitting the shot, he was judging each situation on its merits, and, mm. and that's how he pulled through. Shame he missed that short put near the end, because yeah. yeah. if, he'd, if he'd hold it, he would have beaten... Tiger Woods all-time uh, low score yeah. at, at, yeah. uh, at Augusta. Yeah. It's yeah. a bit like I was watching the oh, big F1 fan. I was watching the Grand Prix and Verstappen, this 17-year-old, you, know, you talk about youth. Yeah. And he's the same. You know, he gets in that racing car and it doesn't seem to uh, phase him at all. No, it's he doesn't. Incredible. No, no. Maybe no. it's... Uh, 
It's incredible, but it's only, you know, it's only a few years ago for me. I can remember youth. You know, <laughs> <laughs> and hair. And hair. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Lisa. You were, you were part of the extra time team. <laughs> That's my march. <laughs> and, and obviously, uh, we'll talk more um, after the break in, in, in a couple of minutes and that, but uh, Villa, great results on Saturday. Yeah. We were both there, weren't we, Jack? Yeah, we were. Well, of course a fully you, yeah. deserved win. Could have yeah. been more goals. Harry yeah. Kane, we were like, who is he? Yeah. We didn't see him all yeah. that one shot, I think he yeah. had one yeah. header. Well, I'll tell you what, we'll, we'll come back and talk more because we've got loads more to talk about Villa yeah. and, and the game and coming up on, on Sunday. We'll do that after the break. Uh, so we're going to take a break now then. Please join us for the second half. Um, but if you've got any questions you'd like to put to us, if we're not talking about your sport or if you've got any suggestions, maybe for a guest you'd like to see on the sofa on Extra Time, uh, then please email us. It's extra time at bigcentre.tv. That's extra time at bigcentre.tv. We'll be back in the second half. See you in a minute. So welcome back. I'm Gary James, and this is the second half of Extra Time with guests Jack Woodward and Lisa Smith. Um, Jack, of course, worked for, for Villa TV, uh, amongst other things, and... Um, you were obviously at the game on Saturday, along with Lisa, who we know is, is a big Villa fan, and this is, it's, you know, it's not a secret, is it? <laughs> no, nor should it be, you know. Me at the end of the game, I actually lost my voice because, yeah. you know. Well, it was a super goal as well, wasn't it? What a, a fantastic cross from Bakuna, just arcing yeah. in there. And, and there he is, Benteke. Eight goals in six games now. Yeah. And, and I he's thought. He's prolific at the moment. He is, isn't he? yeah. He's, yeah. The, he's the man on form. And, and that makes such a huge difference when you're in a relegation fight. If you've got someone who knows where the net is, you know, he's going to help you hugely. So Tim Sherwood's come in. The fans are now behind him, backing him. He's a different style of football. What, what is it? Because you see it week in, week out. You've seen the old style and you've seen the new mm. style. What is it that he's done? That, that, that's making it happen because he's obviously getting the ball to Benteke. Which he's playing to the strength, yeah. He's, yeah. he's feeding the beast, as it were, and, and he will score. And, and he's got a great positivity about him as well, Tim Sherwood. Very infectious. Yeah, it, isn't it is. The his enthusiasm, enthusiasm is, in, is infectious. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that is, is, is making it. I, th I think if you're looking for two significant moments in the season, they have to be. Benteke's penalty in the league game against West it's Brom, wrong. you could sense the relief, oh, the joy. That was a, mm. a pivotal, pivotal moment. Mm. And also, the third goal, his hat-trick goal against his QPR, the, the mm. nerve he showed under pressure mm. in both of those set pieces. It was pinpoint, it was yeah. so, so precise. In off the post, Green, a very good keeper, couldn't get mm. there. And if Villa had lost that game, they would have been pulled into the bottom three, mm. going to Spurs. As it is, they kept QPR at arm's length, and then they went on and got the win at Tottenham. And Tim Sherwood, it was all about Villa. It's all about his new job and doing well for a, a fantastic traditional mm. football club. It wasn't about putting one over on his ex-employers. No, he, he was, was there humble, doing actually. it for Villa. I saw him he, interviewed yeah. and he was saying, great respect for Tottenham. If I hadn't mm. been there, I wouldn't be where I am now. But I'm now, he said, at a bigger club. Which we yeah, like. the, yeah, that's the reason he celebrated <laughs> with, with such delight on yeah. his face, is because mean, yeah. this is his new job and it, mm. it means everything to him mm. to keep Aston Villa in the top division. Mm. An ever present of the Premier League, want to keep it that way. Mm. What I would say is, not out of the woods yet, there's still work to do. You know, there, there can yeah. still be mm. different. You look at some of the teams at the bottom, Leicester. Mm have won a couple of games and yeah. suddenly they've got a great chance yeah. now. Well, QPR, QPR are also QPR playing well. Yeah. Well, uh, just, just on that, uh, is, yeah, I mean, Leicester against the Baggies. Mm. I mean, the, the Baggies, especially with Jeff Astor Day as well. Yeah. Mm. Um, but even so, you, 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 I don't think, it surprised me that Leicester actually took the points. 3-2, it must have been a great game. Yeah, my dad's a Baggies fan and he, he's uh, Jeff Astor, one of his heroes. Yeah. So yeah. I know yeah. they did in, um, an yeah, they did a wonderful day, tribute. Yeah. yeah. But they must have been gutted too, uh, to to lose that game because they started so well. Yeah. Um, and they're, they're getting sucked into the they're, relegation. They're in, in trouble yeah. still, well, yeah. Well, well they, uh, and they need, a bit like Villa, they need one more win really, don't they? To, mm. to, to, yeah. like, like we said, and, and it's the teams around them as well. Mm. Yeah. But it's funny, yeah. isn't it, how everyone's talking about Hull having a difficult run in, the same for the Baggies. But most pundits probably wouldn't have expected Villa to go no, to Spurs and win the game, no. would they? They yeah. wouldn't have thought Burnley would win at home to Manchester City. There will be unexpected results, mm -hmm. but the most important thing, I, I interviewed Sh uh, Tim Sherwood after the game and mentioned that obviously it was a great day because not only did Villa win, other results went their way. And he said, well, all right, what were the other results? 
I don't, I don't know Same. what the results exactly. were. I, I don't know whether that was just a turn of phrase, but or it might have been that genuinely he, he, he's concentrating on his own team. And if you get the wins yourself, if you get yeah. the points yourself, yeah. you're not you're not bothering well, yourself. Well, you, with well, he's probably right because you can't affect that. He can't affect. No, that. of course yeah. he can't. He, he can do his best to make sure that his team wins, mm. but you can't you can't affect what happens elsewhere. You know. But it means we can enjoy. Wembley in the semi-final that He's much more now. Well, this is it, you know, Villa versus Liverpool. Liverpool. Um, have, they, have they beat Villa, Liverpool this uh, season? Won at Anfield. Well, have yeah. a very good record against Liverpool away from Villa mm. Park. So that's uh, that's what, what we're looking at. I mean, I suppose Liverpool might say, well, we've got a good record against Villa uh, away from yeah. Anfield because yeah. they, they do well at Villa against um, the West Midlands a, a, a bit like, obviously, we've had Warsaw. At, at Wembley yeah. uh, um, earlier on this year, a few well, about a month ago, wasn't it? A few weeks ago, uh, and they had the whole Wembley experience, and I think only one or two of their players had actually been to, to the new Wembley. About the Villa squad, uh, many of them actually experienced that sort of atmosphere, and well, you look at it, and it was what five years ago. I can't believe it. Got to the FA Cup semi-finals and the League Cup final at Wembley, mm -hmm. and and some of those the players were involved in and around the squad experience in that. But I think more importantly, quite a few of them tasted the the misery of, of losing in the League Cup. Uh, to, to Bradford. So, so they've got that and perhaps they can use that and think, yeah. well, we're close now. Obviously, it's very different. No disrespect to Bradford, uh, Fabulous yep. Football Club, but this is Liverpool. So, yeah. so it's almost as if Villa are the underdogs here. But, but why not? Why not revel in that role? Mm -hmm. Because yeah, everyone's talking about Steven Gerrard, oh, it would end his Birthday Liverpool journey. And, yeah. but, uh, <laughs> hang on, hang on. What about Villa? Yeah. What about, you know, this, this, this great club haven't won the FA Cup since 1957. Mm -hmm. Okay, we've won it seven times. But but that were, they were a long time ago. Yeah. So it's not just about about Liverpool. It it is about Villa as well, mm. and it, it's going to be fascinating. Great sense of occasion yeah. for the fans. I think it might help us because all yeah. the, all the spotlights on Gerard and on Liverpool, mm -hmm. and there's players at Villa who you know can just you know get really stuck into the game, and they've got no nothing to lose, nothing yeah. to fear. No one's expecting particularly anything from them. I think we're all just going for a great day out. Well, and it is a day out, isn't it, Lisa, mm -hmm. for the fans? You know, we'll be on Wembley Way. Yeah. And we'll, uh, you know, I'm going on the pitch beforehand like it, we did uh, five years ago just to announce the teams and yeah. generate yeah. the atmosphere, which which will it come from within anyway. I mean, <laughs> Liverpool may have, you'll never walk alone, but Villa have got genuine the passion for the club. And that's yeah. going to come a, mm -hmm. across over 30,000 villains converging on, on the arch. But, right. I mean, some would argue, argue you shouldn't have the semi-finals at Wembley. Pente, a look at it. I, I think, in a way, I can understand that because if you win a match at Wembley, really, you ought to be getting some silverware for it or promotion yeah, yeah, or something. Yeah. But that, mm. you know, that's the way it is. Well, so let's enjoy it. Well, it, yeah, you just can't change it. But mm. I personally, I don't think that's right. I think they, they should have had it at a neutral ground somewhere. Yeah. And, and Wembley is, is the, the the cream, you know, on the icing Pretty on the cake, cake, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, it is. You know, yeah. uh, to go there because um, mm. you've gone there, you've won your semi final, and you're going back again. Yeah. OK, it may work. That, oh, we've already played here and we've won, so OK, let's... Mm. I remember it was an anticlimax when we beat Bolton. It and was. Uh, penalties, uh, big yeah. Dion. Well, yeah, su yeah, super moment for, for Dion. Uh, but then the problem was, went back for the final yeah. and Almost didn't really thought, turn up. Almost thought, oh, we, we've already yeah. got this and we hadn't. So yeah, it would have been a brilliant be interesting, mm. but I think it's a different mindset with this team. I think they're... It is. Uh, they look so pumped up at the end of the game. The, they ran to the fans. And uh, I've never seen them like that. Yeah. It was surreal. Well, well they're, obviously, yeah, sorry. they're obviously enjoying playing that <coughs> for, mm. for, for Tim, aren't they? Yeah. Where before, they probably weren't that much because mm. it, it, it happens, doesn't it? So they're enjoying the football now, which, which, which shows itself. And, and they're scoring goals. Yeah, Ben Sake has done well against Liverpool. So too has Gabby mm. uh, and Andy Vyman. So a lot of them have that moment. It was a really hard-fought win mm. earlier in the season. Different set of circumstances, different manager. But you can use that, can't you? Mm. In a, yeah. In a, in a, in a yeah. good way. Yeah. Mm. I mean, uh, we don't know after the game on Saturday. I, I haven't heard anything yet, but, you know, injury wise, is, is there anything? Oh, we'll have to wait and see. Yeah. It's one of those. Uh, I knew you'd ask the question. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, yeah, Kim no. Clark went off with a knee injury. Yeah. And I, mm. I heard he was having a scan over the weekend, but was hoping it wasn't serious. And mm. Gabby pulled up towards the end, didn't he? Yeah, don't know at the moment. But, but, but you know, whoever plays. Players. Yeah, yeah. Wh whoever mm. plays, though. You know, even if it's a, a youngster, even if it's a Jack mm. Grealish or someone like that, you know, that this is. A huge moment for any footballer yeah. in your career, isn't it? I remember Paul Lambert saying in, in the season, you know, you, sometimes these chances don't come along very mm. often, do they? No, no absolutely. No, no. They, they don't. And, and we had the same conversation when we were talking about Warsaw yeah. getting yeah. to Wembley. And I just hope 
in, in some ways, I really hope obviously Villa beat Liverpool, so we've got another Midlands club at Wembley, mm. and then whoever they end up playing in the final, I you know hope that they win, so yeah. they bring some silverware back to to the Midlands. It'll be great. Um, on the other side, it must play on some of the players' heads, especially the younger players, that if they do get through to that final, mm. the games in between. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I, well, you know, I, I and, and some of these. I you know, because, mm. you know, you thought, I thought Wembley might be a distraction. And when I went to Old Trafford last week, I thought, oh, I think some of these boys are thinking of Wembley. They didn't look like they were particularly committed, they, whereas it was different this right. weekend. But my theory, though, on that is you'd expect a mid-table team who has nothing much to play for in the league to do well in the cup. But I don't think it always happens because they load too much pressure onto the cup games then. And mm. then on the flip side, Villa have been embroiled in this mm. fight for survival. Actually, there's a bit of a release when mm. you go into the cup games. And I know they've been lucky with a draws, had four home draws, you still got to win the games, yeah. had a couple of derbies, Leicester mm -hmm. and, and West Brom, Blackpool you know, fought hard and, and Bournemouth were on form at the top of the championship mm -hmm. at the time. So actually they've really come to the plate mm. in, in the yeah. knockout games. Yeah. Long may that continue. <laughs> well, there's a step up in quality in the opposition, isn't it? Yeah. And the likely yeah. is if it was, you know, if you get back to Liverpool, the probability is it would be Arsenal, although you can't mm. rule Radding out on the other one. And, and, and on the day, Jack, you're obviously going to be, be commentating. Yeah, I'll be commentating with Andy Blair alongside me for Villa fans, AVTV for the best build-up and our YouTube channel as well, if I could just get that yeah, plug on, Absolutely. Uh, no, 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 I, I would fine, appreciate that, fine. all my colleagues. <laughs> and, and yeah, you know, the build-up's great, isn't it? Yeah. It's wonderful, but what you want is the, for them mm. not to fluff their lines. I'm sure they will perform. Just to put to in a good standard. game. I think that's all we want to see them play as they can. And yeah, they yeah. showed it on Saturday. Well, let's hope... Let's hope they do. They do do it. Let's hope they get us another club to the to the final. Fingers, Fingers crossed. crossed. Else crossed. Legs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah. And, and it'll be great, mate, if you can uh, come back on again soon. Yeah, I'd love uh, to. And we'll talk more. Hopefully, talking about Villa getting to Wembley for the final this time. Yeah. Um, but that's it. The final whistle's about to blow. Uh, Lisa, thank you as always. Thank and talk again, Jack. Cheers, mate. Nice to see you. Thanks nice for your time. You. Nice and we'll see you tomorrow. That's full time on extra time. Bye bye. <laughs>